Welcome to the Grace Tour, Texas style. Here again on the Grace Tour in Dallas, Texas, where it's hot, extremely hot, but the Holy Ghost is going to be much hotter. It's going to be a wonderful experience. I'm so excited for what's going to take place here. We're in Dallas, Texas this time. Same mission, same team, same spirit, same consistency. Now, the last time you saw us, we were in New York, up there in Harlem, Brooklyn, Manhattan, and God moved in a mighty way. And we've been praying and fasting once again, and we're expecting God to blow our minds right here down south. So let me tell you something. We're not just talking about next level. We're living next level because our God is on another level. And we took another step towards that next level today when it comes to ministry. When I arrived in Dallas, I called my friend Chad at the Mercedes dealership and told him we were looking at purchasing a Sprinter van. And he said, I'm bringing one to you right now. We plan on being on the road for weeks at a time, traveling from state to state across the country. And we need something that has the space and that has the room to be able to carry us back and forth. And so we're praying that God's going to give this to us, and it's only a matter of time. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. You in this room sitting here listening to what I'm saying, we've been in the same position you in. Some of you, you in a position right now, you feel stuck. You feel helpless. You feel hopeless. You feel like, I'm just here. I don't know what's going to happen next. The system done gave up on me. Don't nobody love me. You feel like you hit rock bottom. I get, well, yeah, you being humble right now. Some of you in here, you're going to listen to what we're saying. You're going to hear his story. You heard what I got to say and what I'm about to say. And you're going to say, you know what, today it changes. God can still take you and remold some things. Some of you, when you get up out of here, you can hit that reset button. You can get that GED. You can go to college. You can change the game. Trust me, I know a lot of people that I was in group homes that said my condition would not be my conclusion. And that's what I'm going to leave y'all with because I could go in. Let me just say this right here. Every day, be a little bit better. Man, today was phenomenal. I knew we were coming to Houston, and I knew we had some engagements with some local churches, but I wanted to call my boy Rudy uh, because he is... Um, a counselor over at the group home. And so I said, hey bro, we want to come through. We want to pour into your people. And he was like, yo Jay, I would love for you to come. He was like, but we don't have it in the budget. Let me see what we can work out. I said, no, 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 no. This ain't about the money. We in a city and we want to touch as many people as possible. Wow, today was amazing, man. Today I had the opportunity to bring Next Level Lennon and Jeremy Anderson and his team to come speak to a group of underprivileged kids at a group home. Um, when they left, they couldn't believe that someone that came from where Jeremy's background came from to where he is now. When we first walked in, it was hardcore mad, and I want to talk to nobody. But when we left, man, it was all hugs and kisses. And so um, that's the spirit of the living God. And so that's what the Grace Tour is all about, sharing Jesus' love, his hope, and his grace to all of his children. We are so excited about the Grace Tour, making a stop here in Houston, Texas at the World Harvest Outreach. I think that we've probably gone way past the time where we have to think that church has to always be the agency through which people find out about God. I believe that the church has to be on the go and the church has to also call people in, in and out. I call that centripetal and centrifugal evangelism. And this particular tour represents the church on the road. I'm so excited, God's gonna do something so special tonight. Tonight we're here at the Who, Who Church. It's the World Harvest Outreach Ministries and God is gonna to move tonight. I already know, I feel his presence already. There's some people that are gonna come here that are gonna be blessed with the words of our testimony and they're gonna overcome. Oh, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. Man, 
The Grace Tour was awesome. Um, I have to highlight uh, the young lady, Jill, her testimony. Um, not just, just for the young ladies, but it gives men, a, for me, it gave me a, a different look as to what sometimes uh, women in church go through in situations. My dad decided to bring a gun to church and uh, he, he was tired of being separated from, from us. I have two siblings and my dad said this is not gonna happen anymore and his intentions were to come in the church to shoot my mother. I had to learn that, that God wanted to do something special in me and it was gonna require that I be stripped and hurt bad enough to why I stop struggling. I read something as a wonderful author, his name is Watchman Nee. There's a book he has and it says that when a person is drowning, um, and they struggling and they scared because they're going up beneath the water, that's not the time to save them. Today I had a good experience because like I had been incarcerated a lot of times and then uh, we had a lot of people that come talk to us, but today we're like a lot of people that talk to us, it really didn't hit me. I was just, I'm one of them kids that be like, oh, whatever, you know, I'm just gonna do my time and get out of here. But today they really hit me when they said, uh, time is eventually gonna pass by, so why do something good out of it? Tonight was the first night I got a chance to experience my son, Brian D. with Thomas, speaking and testifying, witnessing for the Lord. There's actually no reason for me being here other than the actual manifestation of God's grace. Do you? enjoy what the world has to offer at times and find yourself later only to think, hey, what was that temporary gratification for? What did I actually gain from it? Absolutely nothing. I'm very proud of him. I'm deeply indebted to Jeremy for taking him under his wing and I thank him greatly. Um, first, I'll say that tonight I thought was awesome. Um, I've never been able to see my brother kind of talk in that atmosphere and with so much conviction, and to see that really made me proud. Last night, in Houston, at the World Harvest Outreach Who Church, seeing my mother, my aunt, my baby sister, and brother-in-law in the crowd, seeing answers to their prayers was incredible. That was just God's manifestation and, and affirmation that He does answer prayer. It may not be in our time or when we want it to be, but when He decides that it's time and we decide to answer that calling, He affirms you. He'll give you reason to keep going. He'll give you reason that every experience that you ever had makes sense. That it was only for this specific purpose that you are called, that you are chosen. And when you pick up that phone and you answer that calling and you make it reality, He will change yours. I got to a place in my ministry and we're talking about being real, y'all. We're talking about being relevant. And I want you to know that you are appointed and you're anointed. God has a specific plan for each and every one of you. He got you at your job for a reason. You work at FedEx Kinko's for a reason, trust me. You at that middle school, you wanted to get a job at that high school, but God said, I want you at that middle school for a reason. You're doing what you do for a living for a reason, trust me. You ain't just there. You ain't just sweeping. You ain't just flipping the burger. You ain't just filing cabinets. You ain't just a nurse for it. Just because you thought you liked that, God put that in you. Because he said one day you're going to get your mind right and you're going to let your light shine where I place you. Wow. Wow. Let me tell you something. The word of God says, I hate that. God puts kings up and takes kings down. Don't be tripping. That job you want, trust me, God, don't, he wants to bless you. He wants to blow your mind. He's just like, trust me first. Our problem is, is we be seeking the promise as opposed to the one who made us the promise. So when you don't get that job, don't trip. Just know that God's in control. Trust me, I work for a corporate company and they, gave, they put me on the PIP, a performance improvement plan. And everybody in the company knew that when you got put on the PIP, you like 60 days out and we gonna like, go ahead and give you your severance check. It was nice, but no thank you. Right? And so they put me on one of those and they said, okay, this is the numbers you need to meet. And I ain't come nowhere near them numbers. And I was at a conference in Orlando and my boss flew in to meet me. I'm like, God, oh, this about to get really gangster when they fly in, you know what I'm saying, to fire you in person. They're like, I'm gonna fly in to let you know what's real. No, thank you. 
I'm like, what in the world? He in the lobby. He calls me down. I leave my hotel room. I go to the lobby. He said, Jeremy, I'm looking at the performance improvement plan. Let's wrap this up. I got a flight in a few hours. I'm like, okay. He's like, I'm looking at the performance improvement plan. You didn't come nowhere near your numbers. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to keep you. We're going to give you a $5,000 a year raise. I'm like, what? I'm like, well, I don't understand. He was like, I don't know. That just came down for corporate. I said, that corporate. <laughs> that corporate. Don't get it twisted. God is in control. They can't fire you. You, you, tell, you tell your boss been threatening you. You go in the bathroom and you remind yourself, he can't fire me unless God says so. We be giving these people, we give them too much power. We give them too much authority. God is in control. I'm gonna show you how to get to the next level right now. There are some basic things. God's like, the food, shelter, clothing, I can, that's easy. I'll take care of that stuff. Just keep me first. But then he says something in Hebrews 11 6. Hebrews 11 6 is powerful. It says that mm, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Doing the right thing for God, it shouldn't be an emotional thing. Because it's not about your feelings. That's right. When the situations come because of my consequence, because of my choices, when my consequences get too heavy for me, God says yes, those consequences belong to you, but I'm going to walk through it with you. That's what God said. So you got one level, he's like, seek me first. And then he's like, if you seek me on a consistent basis, that's the next level. Now I can reward you. This is what we need today. We need to hear the word of God from a person's experience. There's nothing that will strengthen and encourage not only young people, but all of us, like the word of God brought from a person who's had an experience with God, an encounter that makes a difference. We are blessed. I can see how, why he calls it next level living. They're moving from the realm of the everyday average into a more pro profound relationship with Jesus. But there's a third level that I'm trying to abide in. And it's found in Psalms 37, four. And you can only do this with the spirit of God. The word of God says, that if you delight yourself in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your heart. I want to say it one more time. I want y'all to get it. I'm going to tell y'all what that looks like. The Word of God says, God, man, let me tell you something. God ain't tripping on what you're dealing with. He like, are oh, you still on that? Like, you still sleeping around? You still seeking that information? They ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. Like, seek me and I'm going to blow your mind. Tonight, um, I attended the youth rally here in Dallas for the Grace Tour and I'm very glad that I came. It was very inspiring. It was really um, just powerful to hear the testimonies of the three different individuals, Brandon and Jill and Jeremy. And um, I think that is something that anyone and everyone should attend if they possibly can. And I'm glad that I was able to attend. God made such a powerful move last night that I am still overwhelmed. I still have chills. I still, whew, it's amazing. It's an amazing thing to watch God move, how he moved right before your very eyes. Seeing the turnout that we had and then the response that they gave was just uh, something that just keeps constantly proving to me that God's got us on a path. You know what I'm saying? That, that you know, God's called us to do a specific thing and that, uh, we're diligently seeking him, as the Bible says, and for that, you know, he will bless what we got going on. Last night was strong. I mean, the community came out in full effect, and that's what it's all about. We get excited about that, especially when it's community people, because that gives us an opportunity to share with people who may not be hearing stories of God's grace and his mercy and his love. And so, man, let me tell you something. The spirit fell in a very, very, very major way, and I was extremely pleased with the outcome. I know Pastor Boyd was as well. We were at the Lancaster Elementary School, and we packed out the place and it was just a beautiful atmosphere. Then afterwards, we had book signings, t-shirts, 
cupcakes, people connecting. It was just great. It was love, and that's what God is all about. So I think it was the perfect way to end the Grace Tier in Texas, and I'm uh, looking forward to our next stop, Columbia, Missouri.